So, I recently made a video on how Disney has purchased the majority of 20th Century Fox. The only thing Fox related that they didn't buy was Fox News and Fox Sports. But, is it possible that Disney owns too much stuff? Now, you guys might be thinking, what do you mean Disney owns too much stuff? I mean, all that they own is Marvel, Lucasfilm, Maker Studios, ABC, ESPN, The Muppets, and 20th Century Fox. Oh, God. You see what I mean? Disney currently owns seven different properties that are not their own. And the biggest being their most recent purchase. So, with this recent Fox purchasing, it could be possible that Disney is owning too much stuff, and it could hurt the Disney brand. <laughs> figure this out, we're going to have to go back in the 90s, where Disney purchased their first property that wasn't their own, ABC. In the 1950s, when television was starting to get new, Disney needed some money to make the theme park. So they made a deal with ABC to produce some shows for the network, such as the Mickey Mouse Cl Club, Zorro, and Davy Crockett. But Disney didn't own ABC at that point. It wasn't until a former ABC executive, Michael Eisner, became the CEO of Disney, he decided, hey, we should probably buy this network. So Disney bought ABC, and as soon as you know it, they started producing show after show for the network. The next thing that Disney would buy would be the Muppets in 2004. In 1990, Disney MGM Studios opened the Muppet Vision 3D, which was actually the final Muppet project that Jim Henson worked on before he died. When he eventually died, his family was considering of canceling the project. It wasn't until his former partner Frank Oz came in to say that the world should be able to see the last project that Jim Henson worked on. So the ride would eventually open, and it would get a Disneyland counterpart as an opening day attraction at Disney's California Adventure in 2001. After that, the following two Muppet movies would be distributed by Disney such as Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure Island. And some of the upcoming shows at the time, produced by the Jim Henson Company, would be made by Disney as well, such as Dinosaurs and Bear in the Big Blue House. And in 2004, Disney would go ahead and buy the Muppets, with the TV special, the Muppet Wizard of Oz premiering the following year. But when Disney bought the Muppets, there was a bit of copyright problem. That meaning that the main Muppets can no longer have crossovers with other Jim Henson properties unless they were bought by Disney themselves or made by them, such as Dinosaurs and Bear in the Big Blue House. Which means this guy could no longer appear on Sesame Street. Yeah, and I find that quite bull. I mean, Jesus, I spent like over 30 years on that freaking show and Kermit, 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 calm down, calm down. Oh, uh, I know, it's a big deal. And... Kermit, that happened over 13 years ago. You can get over it. Okay, I, I can get over it. Getting over it. Go get yourself a hot pocket or something. Okay. Anyway, in 2008, Disney premiered their Christmas special with the Muppets, the Muppets Christmas Letter for Santa, and fans hated it. I myself haven't seen it, but I kind of don't want to.
and the Muppets were eventually dead until in 2011, Disney brought back the name of the Muppets with the 2011 Muppet movie and its sequel in 2014, Muppets Most Wanted. They were both received pretty good by both critics and fans, and it seems like the Muppets were back on track. And these films helped introduce a new fan base to the Muppets, such as me. But apparently, one year after your Muppets Most Wanted air, Disney released a sitcom on the Muppets on ABC, which was a bit more adult than the usual Muppet shows. So, anyway, this show did not do very well for ABC, and eventually canceled in March of 2015. And, and there will not be a second season to the sick to the show, and it's sad. And so far, there was no continuation for the Muppets until uh, Disney announced that they would be bringing back the Muppet Baby Show as a com as a computer animated series on Disney Junior. And as a Muppet fan, I, w I am excited to see how Disney will handle Disney Jr. version of uh, Muppet Babies. I might be too old for the target audience, but I do enjoy shows like Sesame Street, which are under the Muppet name, things that Disney doesn't own. And... Uh, and and adults can enjoy those, and adults can enjoy the original Muppet Babies as well. It didn't last eight seasons for nothing. But let's hope that this upcoming Muppet Baby show doesn't fail underneath the eyes of the Muppet sitcom. But Disney had proved that their revivals are pretty good with the recent DuckTales show, so maybe this show will be very good. But after Disney bought the Muppets, Disney tech temporarily bought the Power Rangers But in 2009, the Bond bought back Power Rangers from Disney. So since Disney does not turn it on Power Rangers, I feel like I shouldn't be mentioning it here. So let's go ahead and move on to Marvel. Believe it or not, Disney was considering buying Marvel as early as the mid-90s, but CEO of Disney at the time, Michael Eisner, thought that it wasn't Disney enough. Thirteen years later, Iron Man hit theaters, and that was made by Marvel with their own movie studio, starting a little thing called the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the film was a hit. And in 2009, Disney bought Marvel. But at the time, the several film rights have been given to other studios. Fox got X-Men Fantastic Four, Universal got The Hulk, and Sony got Spider-Man and Ghost Rider. But eventually, Disney would get The Hulk. So, Marvel decided to make movies based on their more obscure characters at the time, such as Thor and the Guardians of the Galaxy. And in 2012, The Avengers was in theaters, and it became the highest grossing film of the year, and the third highest grossing film of all time being one of the biggest hits in Disney history. And, and at the time, a couple of years later, Disney decided to make Marvel shows on Netflix. The first of them being Daredevil. And the shows are a part of the cinematic universe. The show that would follow would be Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, The Defenders, and The Punisher. With even more underrated characters with Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Iron Fist. 
with the two most popular characters being Daredevil and the Punisher. But it's weird to think that the Punisher would be in a Disney franchise, so yeah. But during this time, Marvel have had some problems with their most popular character of all time, Spider-Man. And they definitely wanted that Spidey to be in the MCU. So they made a deal with Sony to put Spider-Man into the MCU, starting with Captain America Civil War, and eventually giving him his own movie with Spider-Man Homecoming, which is having a sequel, and having him be in Avengers Infinity War. And now there are some Marvel properties on Hulu right now, such as the such as The Runaways, which I did a trailer reaction for. And there are also Marvel properties on ABC, such as uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, and The Inhuman. Oh, no! And thanks to the and the Marvel Cinematic Universe has become the highest grossing film franchise of all time. So it looks like things are doing pretty good. Let's head over to Star Wars. In 1987, Star Tours opened at Disneyland and Disney World. And it quickly became a great ride and a favorite among Star Wars fans and Disney Park fans. And in the early 90s, the Indiana Jones ride, Indiana Jones Adventures, would open at Disneyland, California. And in 2012, George Lucas did the unthinkable. He sold his entire company, Lucasfilm, over to Disney. Now, fans of Star Wars were scared, and they thought that Disney would Disneyfy the crap out of Star Wars. But that's what people thought when Marvel was bought out by Disney, and The Avengers was released that same year, so, yeah. Star Wars would be fine. And it would! In 2014, Disney SD aired Star Wars Rebels, and the show was pretty well received. And the following year, The Force Awakens hit theaters, and it was a phenomenon that Christmas. New fans came in, old fans were pleased, and Star Wars was back. And in 2016, Rogue One hit theaters. It wasn't received as well as The Force Awakens, because the film went through constant rewrites and reshoots, and it clearly showed. But it was still well received. And in 2017, The Last Jedi hit theaters, and it was awesome! And I will make a future review of the movie, but trust me, it's a good movie. Okay, to be honest, I know zero things about the things that happened when Disney bought Maker. Or so... Don't listen to me on this one. Go look at the go listen to an expert that knows a good amount about makeup. But I know that this was the time that Disney well decided to go all non Disney. I mean sure, they still had some pretty successful properties, but their biggest films of their that year seemed to be films that weren't made by Disney. With the exception of Finding Dory, which made a good amount of money. And Pixar was still making them some money. Marvel was still making them some money. 
and Star Wars is doing pretty well, but those technically aren't Disney. What about from Disney Animation Studios and Flat Out Disney? Well, there aren't a lot of them right now. And in 2017, last year, Disney did the unthinkable. They made that Simpsons joke a reality by buying Fox. Watch my video about it. And in that same year, they had a avatar based land. And they just so happened to buy Fox, which made the movies. So basically, how can this affect Disney's future? Disney owns over six different properties that isn't their own. And one of them is an entire big motion picture company. Featuring a whole bunch of stuff such as The Simpsons, The X-Men, and Mrs. Doubtfire of the Alien movies, and more. And it will be a lot harder for different companies to compete against Disney. Since they own the majority of entertainment stuff. The only other companies that own a crap load of stuff that Disney does would be Warner Brothers, Paramount, and Sony. And it would be amazing if Disney bought one of those companies and Disney would and the rest of the world would be that. What? And since Disney is relying on very little of their newer or their older properties or properties that they own, it's kind of sad. And let's not mention that they have been screwing up the public domain for years. And this is probably why they decided to do all of this. They decided to do this simply because of the fact that they are running out of ideas. In fact, they've been running out of ideas so bad that they practically decided to remake every single animated film that they have ever made. You know, except for The Black Cauldron and films that actually deserve to be remade. So. Let's think about this for a moment. Disney is buying everything and remaking everything rather than just letting original ideas come. They're even remaking their older property TV shows and remaking properties that weren't originally theirs of TV shows. My brain hurts right now. This will be a lot harder for other companies that aren't owned by Disney to make a profit. Because no company can compete against Disney alone. DC can compete against Marvel. Nickelodeon and, and Cartoon Network can compete against the Disney TV networks. And, uh... Illumination can compete against Disney Animation and Pixar, as well as DreamWorks, but no company can compete against Disney as a whole, because Disney is too large of a company, and they own too much stuff. It hurts their future, and it is hurting other companies' future. So, does Disney own too much stuff? Debatable, but I guess you can say that they own quite 
that they own one product too many. In fact, what's next? Disney buys Apple. Disney owns Nintendo. Disney owns Hasbro. Disney owns Viacom. Disney owns Beef Jerky. So, we're just going to see you what happens next. I don't feel like I should give this a rating, but since this is a theory on Disney stuff, does Disney own too much stuff? Yes. So I would give this four mouse ears out of one Homer Simpson donut. But that's just what I think of this theory. Do you think that Disney owns too much stuff and this is affecting both their and other country companies' future? Comment below and let me know. Anyway guys, I hope you ring the I hope you click the like button, click the subscribe button, and ring the bell to become part of our notification squad. Anyway guys, this was the longest animated theory I have ever worked on. I had to split it up into two parts. So anyway guys, I will see you later. Bye! Oh, and let's hope we have a good 2018. You wanna know what's the most popular animated theory on this channel? That's right. The Lin Loud transgender theory. So you know what that means. I'm gonna be making some more Loud House theories. And what do you know? It's there happens to be another popular theory on the Loud House. And this one is a legitimate question. That, that people have been asking since the beginning of the show. And that question is, what's with Lincoln's white hair? So how this theory is going to go out is that I'm going to be taking a look at popular theories on why Lincoln has white hair and see which one sounds most plausible. Now without further ado, let's get started with the most famous one, Lincoln is adopted. In the episode, Ty said Ben, Lincoln overhears his folks saying that they're going to be getting rid of him. When really, they were just talking about Ty. And besides, this whole theory doesn't even matter, and since in the episode Not Allowed, it was flat out said that Lincoln wasn't adopted. But instead, he was delivered by the First Lady. Another theory says that Lincoln has white hair due to his top top. And since when you look at them side by side, they look pretty similar. But the reason why Pop Pop has white hair is because, well, he's old. That's natural. But Lincoln's white hair is still a mystery. But then again, he could have gotten this from his Pop Pop up and it's from his mother's side. And maybe his Maybe his mother's hair is naturally gray, and she just dyes it. Another popular theory is that, that Lincoln was prank dog. In the episode April Fool's Rules, it's revealed that Luann constantly pranks her family members and everyone else that arrives on the house on April Fool's Day. So what if one of those pranks was dyeing Lincoln's hair white? And considering on what we looked at so far, dyed hair seems like the most natural answer. But, can it really be considered true? Whoa! Technically, technically, well... We're gonna have to look at behind the scenes facts with this one. Originally, 
The show was supposed to be about a family of rabbits. 26 rabbits. You know, since rabbits multiply. And they were white rabbits. Eventually, someone working on the show convinced the show's creator, Chris Savino, to change them to humans to be more relatable. And this would later, this would later convey into Link and stuff, Aunt Rabbit, Bun Bun, which is why he wears a polo. And I guess that rabbit design would go into Lincoln's final design with him having white hair. It's a bit of a technicality, but... But he's... The true reason why Lincoln's hair is white is because he was originally a rabbit. But that's just a behind-the-scenes fact, not an actual answer in the show. Man, if someone in the show is like, like, oh, your hair's white because, well, you were a rabbit. Then that would just be flat out breaking the fourth wall. But, but then again, the show broke the fourth wall in almost every single episode. It's almost like oh, the fourth wall doesn't even exist. You know, with, uh, with mostly Lincoln and occasionally some other character talking to the audience. Like, we're just a bunch of little kitties! But anyway, um, but I still feel like that the most likely answer to this is that Lincoln's hair would die. Maybe he had pranked by Luann, or he probably just liked the color white and he would dye his hair. But, but, but then again, it might be explained that even Lincoln doesn't know why his hair is white. Because in the episode Not Allowed, both Clyde and him and were basically like, We still don't know the mystery of your white hair. So, Lincoln probably doesn't even know why his hair is white to begin with. So basically, or technically, every single theory that we talked about can basically be, be throw out the window. Because, no. well... Lincoln just doesn't know. And, yeah. It's basically the mystery of Arnold's football head and why Spongebob looks like a kitchen sponge instead of a sea sponge. But, we could probably just basically just say this as cartoon logic. Or, he inherited from his mom, whose hair is white. But it's dyed blonde. So, yeah. I'm not gonna give this particular theory a rating. But uh, here's a, I'm gonna have to give the theory that Lincoln was adopted zero burpin burgers out of five. The theory that Lincoln inherited from his pop pop three burpin burgers out of five. And the fact that Lincoln's hair would die four burping burgers out of five. And the fact that Lincoln doesn't know it, five burping burgers out of five. And crap, no, I ain't showing that. <laughs> or am I? I don't know what's going on anymore! But that's all for this video. Please give this video a thumbs up. Come below, let me know what you think about this theory. Hey, subscribe to and ring the bell to keep up with more animated theories and videos on the Loud House and cartoons and Nickelodeon and whatever. So anyway guys, if you like this video, make sure you check out my other videos on the Loud House, such as... That Loud House episode where Lily said, said the D word. And, uh, uh, the one where Chris Savino was fired. The one about the Not Allowed episode. That, my Nerd Alert episode on the, uh, 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 uh Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum, on the episode Legends, and of course, the animated theory on whether or not Lynn was transgender. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
you know, tune in next time for another animated series, and I will see you later. Bye! Hey guys, so, you know that gumball creepypasta, the greeting? Well, well, look at this. Yep, on the official Cartoon Network YouTube channel, The Amazing World Gumball, Lost Episode, The Grieving, Cartoon Network. This is released on the official Cartoon Network YouTube channel, so, The Grieving is probably real, but the video is 1 minute 22 seconds long, so... So the Adventure Time Theory is going to be taking a little bit of a while. I know this is a very different type of cartoon, of, I mean animated theory, but this is basically filler for when the Adventure Time Theory is coming in. So let's basically just watch this video. Warning, not for the faint-hearted. You are about to see the first real footage from a lost episode called... All right, the grieving. Most people who have watched it have never been seen again. Never the grieving been. contains okay. scenes that some viewers may find extremely upsetting. The amazing world of Gumball right, cannot yeah. and will not okay. accept any responsibility for the effects of what you're about to see. Yes, Cartoon Network you will. Have. Okay, let's see the clip. This is exciting. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Clickbait! What? Wait, there's a video on the side that says Gumball the Griefing Creepypasta Lost Episode, so check that out. Uh, it's, it's craning. Clearly not the real version, because it's... When creepypasta videos are graining, it makes it even harder to believe that they're real, so... Cartoon Network, you legit had me fooled. I thought that was a legit clip from a lost episode of Gumball. Can you explain yourself, Cartoon Network? I mean, what a waste of an episode. Then again, this is a filler video, so... There really is no point to this video at all. Hey, I'm wearing a jacket because it's cold. videos and sorry the the adventure time theory will not be being made because no one doesn't know what time is you know what right now I'm going to be I'm gonna text him and uh, I'm gonna text him uh, I'm going to test him. Where's the Adventure Time theory? <laughs> yeah. So could you ever update me on that? 
Alright, I just delivered it, and... Yeah, let's get to the subject of this video, um... So, I like Nicktoons, if you couldn't tell, and, uh... Hey Arnold, on above my, um... Left boot, boop, or moob. And, yeah. But I like more Nick Toot the Sock with SpongeBob and Hey Arnold. I also like the show, or at least the first two shows, by Butch Hartman, who has left Nickelodeon, and he has written, and similar to, uh, the grieving there has been a video uploaded to his youtube channel discussing the popular theory that timmy turner and danny fenton are the same person it's titled danny phantom and timmy turner i have not watched the video yet but I am excited to see what it looks like. Oh, there's the thumbnail. Just to let you know. Okay. So, I'm going to be reacting to this video. I haven't done a reaction in a while. So, anyway, let's hit. It is Timmy Turner. Oh, sorry. I, I watched a little bit of it. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, Iron fans. The question Hi. is on us. Yeah, that's a question. Good question. Let's break it down right now, shall we? This this theory has been okay, floating sorry. around the internet like what floats around? What kind of things float around? I know that Cosmolanda float around, I know that. I know ghosts float around. Yeah, yeah, floating around for a long time. I was gonna Turner, say that. Now, let me ask you that's a good question. question. What do you guys think? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Do you guys think Timmy Turner became Danny Fan in some way? Now why would people think this? I mean it's Well, I personally don't think it because there's a lot of things that basically plot of the theory. For instance, the uh Timmy Turner movies. Like the Fairly Odd Parents live action movies where he's still Timmy Turner. Not to mention in uh which has made like a Fairly Odd Parents ten years later and well, well Timmy's not Danny and he's done Danny Phantom ten years younger and well Danny's not Timmy and <laughs> Man, why is my face so wet? Go away! Shoot! Shoot! No one likes you! Shoot! I said shoot! Shoot! Get out of here. Yeah. And... And plus there was that whole, uh... Plus he made a card... Made a video for Nickelodeon's YouTube channel crossing over all four of his shows, so... He never said if that was canon or not, but I don't know. Maybe he'll say it in the video, but let's continue. It's a legit question, if you must know. Being the guy who created both shows, Danny Phantom and Fairly Odd Parents, I know for a fact whether this is true or not. Well, let's well, look at me. At first, when I heard this theory, I'm like, yeah, right. That's that's silly. I mean, they're two different kids. They live in two different universes. Uh -huh. Their two shows have yeah. a completely different vibe. So let's start here. Let's start with Timmy and his fairies. Timmy's got a pretty good deal going. There they are. Ten years old, so great as a very mean babysitter named Vicky. Parents sweet, but kind of oblivious. And so Timmy's kind of on his own. Yeah. Kind of alone. So well, he got him when they were nine. Like Cosmo and Wanda, and they can do anything. They really can. They can do anything. Now, are they good at doing anything? Mm. Not really. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they yeah. mess up. Most yeah. of the time, things work out, but it uh, really is kind of a be careful. Well, they can't do anything. That's the rules. He's going along great. He's getting to make it everywhere. So things are going fine. He's not making for an occasional misstep uh, with Vicky or Mr. Crocker. Parents! But then Timmy <laughs> finds out. Channels he uses. What I would do is I would make a wish that I wish I could always remember the great memories that we have had together. Like Butch said in his Q&A video about leaving Nickelodeon. That's what I would wish for if I had fairies. But yeah. Or you could just do it like throw up Timmy Turner's by where 
you can't grant wishes for yourself, and, but, and, it, it, but you still get to keep them around. Because you love them so much. But still think about that. Would you really want to lose the ultimate power in the universe? The power to make possible anything you wish for. Think about that. I could cure cancer. Croc is still remembered. A lot of people have sort of. They think that Jimmy Turner, in a great desire to keep his best friends who are ultimately powerful, made an amazing wish. He wished that not only could he keep the spirit, he wanted to hide so deep undercover that no one could find him, not even Jordan, with all of his magical powers. Tim wishes uh, the whole other universe. And that is the universe. That makes sense. Now, Timmy doesn't hide in Danny Phantom's universe. Timmy Turner creates Danny Phantom's universe. He becomes a kid named Danny Fenton. He's a little older. He even wishes Cosmo. Makes sense. I mentioned. Do look similar. I never noticed that. Yeah, 
Give me the answer. Just give it the answer. You created them. everyone boy oh boy are we going to have another fun 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 theory on the nick jr show okay so what is today's video wait today's episode is gregory's room mm. So, time we take a look at another lost episode of a cartoon. It's been a while since we tackled one. You haven't tackled one since October. And last time I talked about one, I kind of got murdered by Frankenstein's monster. Weird. I wonder if that will somehow connect with the rest of the episode. Yeah, probably won't. So anyway, let's talk about this supposedly lost Nick Jr. pilot, Gregory's Room. The narrator in this story had a dream of being a cartoon texter. When his parents found out about this, they took him to Nickelodeon Studios to see a clip of a future Nickelodeon cartoon. He, along with a lot of other kids, were in a theater, alone. Until suddenly, a man came out out of nowhere with a CD, saying that Nickelodeon is making a brand new cartoon for Nick Jr. The kids cheered. The man put in the CD and played a cartoon called Gregory's Room. The cartoon opens with a man named Gregory sitting in a room alone. With a robotic voice, he says that he wants to have fun alone with no police, no adults, and that nobody can hear them. The episode ends with the fiery bits of hell over our character, and it's in color to show how creepy it is. And the guy walks back into the theater room with all the kids crying uncontrollably. Is it real? Really? Well, there is one thing that I have to give to this creepy pasta. It's not gory. As take taking a look at Squidward's suicide, no clues, and dead Bart, they're all pretty gory. This one is simply just scary. Probably because it doesn't feature any of our any of the beloved characters in animation. Since it's not based on characters that nobody has ever heard of, it makes sense that it would not be as gory. Because one of the things that I'm pretty sure creepy pasta creators like doing is having some of our favorite characters to get blue brutally murdered or kill themselves in some also to imagine stuff like blood eyes coming out of Squidward or, or dead or Bart's corpse just laying there on the ground and Blue from Blue's Clues having like so many guts out of her and 
So, I still do not believe that this episode is actually a real thing, because, like with no clues, this was meant to air on Nick Jr. Something meant for preschoolers. So, if Nickelodeon would actually want to make this, they would probably air it on regular Nickelodeon, since it seems to be in the same vein as something like Are You Afraid of the Dark? That, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if this was an episode. This was supposed to be a lost episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? But, probably isn't. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And, it was a very weird episode of Anime Theory. But hey, the last two episodes were reactions, and we're finally back to making real episodes now. And next week's episode is going to be uh, a bit weird. Weird in the same lines of something like the Cartoon Universe theory and the Does Disney Own Too Much Stuff theory. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later. Bye! Three decades, we have had this unique art form known as CGI. And is anybody just sick of it at this point? I mean, it's practically in every film that's released nowadays, whether it's used as a special effect or as an animated film, just so that people the characters can interact with each other. So, aren't you, aren't you just sick of CGI? But that's not the question I'm asking today. Does CGI suck? Now, we have to understand why people aren't very fond of CGI to begin with. Because back in the 90s, people couldn't get enough of it. Films such as Jurassic Park and Terminator 2 fully embraced it, and the CGI still looks really good to this day. Mostly because it was the filmmaker's first time using it. Thus, they experimented with the formula. For instance, in Terminator 2, there's motion capture after motion capture after motion capture of the T-1000 which would most likely be used today once just to get a hint of the lighting and the movement. And whenever the T-1000 was hit, it was always a practical effect on the set. Yeah, that is an animatronic. Pretty impressive, ain't it? And since this was most likely people's first exposures to CGI effects, it was easy to blend the animatronics in with the CGI, because back then, people couldn't tell. But now that we've been exposed to it too much, much we can easily tell what's CG and what's animatronic. But later, we got a bit much of CGI. It was being used for pretty much every movie that came out, and it's usually for action movies. Beings, special effects, monsters, all sorts of crap. But you could do dangerous stunts that could hurt people if it's unpractical, but could now be done safer with CG. Like, we don't have to put a helicopter in a tunnel or put Tom Cruise on a train. We don't have to put, put Andrew have to put Toby McGuire on a train either. We'll just CG it all. That's the safe route. But people then got kept on and CG started to look a bit crappy in some movies. I mean, let's look at Yoda in Empire Strikes Back. He looks real. It looks like he's actually there. You never think that just there's a guy holding him. 
And you see Yoda. Mostly because of the lighting and the movement reflects reality. And it makes him look like he's really there. Mostly because, well, he is there. And now let's take a Yoda in Attack of the Clones and in Return of the Sith. He doesn't look quite like he's really there. Because the lighting is off. And he's an animated puppet for sure, but he's an animated puppet who's not there. But that doesn't mean all CG around this time was crap. I mean, I mean, Jesus, Gollum from Two Towers looks freaking amazing. He, he always looked like he was there. Just because he is. Andy Serkis, who provides the voice, actually got in costume and performed in front of the camera with the other actors. He, so that they have a real life replica. And the guy that got to do the textures from the skin wasn't a computer guy. He was a makeup guy. In fact, he was originally making a costume for, Yo for, for Yoda. We ain't talking about Yoda. We, we talking about Gollum. In fact, he was originally talking about making a costume for Gollum. But when they decided to go the CG route, they taught him the art form. Mostly because he knew how to do textures. And he did. Now he was a freaking great of animated films. Let's face it. We don't watch films like The Iron Giant or Beauty and the Beast with the illusion of what we're seeing is actually there. We see them because they feature story, character, and sometimes songs that we really enjoy, and watch them over and over again. This is why computer animated movies have caught on, because for animation, it's the closest thing to real life. Heck, that's why some of these motion capture movies have caught on, well, in the early 2000s. It's pretty much dead at this point, but Films like Shrek and the Toy Story movies have helped, helped CGI grow as an art form for computer animation. And I really enjoy 2D animation, but for animation and movies, CGI looks the most realistic. Even when you use it for talking animals or characters that are as cartoony as possible. Now, when CGI first started, it, it really crappy. I mean, the characters look like lifeless puppets because, well, let's face it, that's what they are. And now, the art form has grown, and these movies have become classic and classic 2D movies. And it's pretty rare that you'll see an animated movie in theaters that's not CGI. But uh, usually when it's not, it's usually stop motion. And CG can even work really well in live action films. Films such as Sin City and 300 has very fake looking CGI backgrounds. But to be honest, nobody cares. We all just really enjoy looking at them. And CGI is also good at getting rid of the strings, such as before CGI, effects would often be used by strings and stuff. But now, with CGI, we can easily just get rid of stuff like, like heads and legs in Sleepy Hollow and Forrest Gump, truly making it look like the Headless Horseman is in fact headless. So in the end, maybe CGI is better at telling us that something's not there rather than something is there. So, not everything is perfect. Not all CGI is gonna look good. And if you truly want to make some movies and
you might as well put it with puppets, models, guys in suits, and other practical effects. Like how the new Star Wars movie has to be. So, let's just embrace this UCI. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what, it's still going to have this additional effect anyway. Maybe for animation, the might have a return to traditional animation that's not based on a TV show like like Spud Out of Water or My Little Pony the Movie. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and Oh, hold on, guy! Oh. Yoda, Yoda, what are you doing? I hear you talk crap about me. Yep, I was. You better not be talking crap about me. No, not really. I, I, well, I, I only talked crap about your CGI version. Yeah, I hope it's CGI version. Okay, Yoda. Okay, Yoda. Puppet you is much better. Okay? What are you doing business with your film boss? I should really be in episodes of Animal Watching more often. In fact, when did this episode of Animal Watching? When did Animal Watching movie? In fact, didn't you the lead work? I don't know, half the footage? He know even he likes he. Okay. Anyway, guys, I'll see you later. Bye. Well, I guess I hear for the uh, end credits. You know, Bill Buff should make some more. Oh, thank you, man. I in that movie. I in that movie. It's great because I in it. Yeah. Bill Buff should make some more animal watches. And they should have more of me in them. And all these movies suck because I ain't in them. Yeah. Oh, Attack of the Claws, Empire Strikes Back, I in there. That's the best movie ever. Because okay, I am in there. Okay, so, uh, we, we will get these movies. So, uh, yeah, that's a game, that's a music video. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think he was even listening to me because, uh, I saw Agent, and he never knew the Asian part of me. Because, also because, I saw Asia. I saw freaking Asia. So yeah. Anyway guys, I see you later. Bye.